today I have a tutorial for you that I am so, so excited to be sharing with you. I have been working on this creative project for the past two and a half months now. And it has just been taking over my life and I'm so excited for it to finally be finished and I'm so pleased with how it came together. Rather than me introducing you to him, how about we have him introduce himself? My name is Connor. I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. I made Connor the android sent by Cyberlife. Connor is a character from Detroit Become Human. Detroit Become Human is a video game that got released earlier this year and since then it has completely swept over the world. If you're anything like me, Detroit Become Human has become your obsession, your religion, your everything. The fan art and the community that has come out of that is just incredible. Brian Deckard, who plays Connor and Amelia, are always so kind to their fans and they have greatly inspired me to put all of this creative energy and love for Detroit Become Human into a fully functioning Connor Detroit Become Human doll. Now, what do I mean by fully functioning? Well, all systems are operational, and by that I mean he has a working LED, and like you heard earlier, he has a working voice box. And there are a couple of other things that I will show you later in the video when I tell you how I made him that you could consider components, bio components. <laughs> Fucking hell. A lot of detail has been put into this doll and I'm so excited to finally be able to share him with you. I just want to say a quick disclaimer. One, very challenging to a beginner, at least, if you've never sewed anything before or you've never drafted patterns. Two, it can be very expensive. I spent way too much money on making this doll, but that's because it was a labor of love for me. And if you want to make a plushie, you do not need to spend as much money as I did. The only reason this was so much money was because several of his bio components, like his LED and his voice box, did cost a little bit of money. <laughs> so I hope you appreciate Connor as much as I do. If you haven't ever heard of this video game before, please go watch playthroughs, watch trailers, watch Brian and Amelia on Twitch. Just become fully immersed in the Detroit Become Human world as I have. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So these are the materials that I'm going to be using. I like to always just cut out little squares of the fabric that I'm using before I start a project, just so I know what I'm working with. So starting with the body, I made all of the patterns myself, and it took me several tries to sketch a body shape that I liked at first but I did eventually do it and I settled on something that looks a little bit like this. So I want our plushie to have support in it and to do that I'm going to be using a wire and because I'm a nerd <laughs> and the androids have blue blood I decided to go with a blue wire. Essentially there is going to be wiring in the head, the torso, and then the neck, arms, and legs. Measuring out pieces of wire that are as long as each of the appendages that they're going to be put into. all of the pieces of the body onto the fabric right sides together and just cut around them. You should have a chin piece, four leg pieces, four arm pieces, two head pieces, and two feet pieces as well as two torso pieces and the torso is split down the half on one of the sides. Once you sew around your appendage, you can stick your wiring and fluff in there.
I wanted to add some ears. So essentially you just draw an ear shape and put a little stem on the side. Because my Connor plushie has parts that will eventually run out of battery power, such as the voice box and the LED, I wanted to be sure that I could easily access them whenever I need to change the batteries. So on the head at one of the openings, I put some Velcro so that I can easily open and close the head. And then I'm also going to do the same thing on the torso. So for the face, I'm going to be using these little eye pieces. They're called safety eyes and you can buy them on Amazon and a lot of dolls and plushies and stuff use them and they just look a lot more realistic than buttons. So here is the torso. We have two pieces. We have the back piece and then we have the front. And the back one is cut in half with enough fabric so that the gate they could be overlapped as well and like I said you're just going to put the velcro on the back pieces so that you can easily open the torso whenever you need to change the batteries or if you want to use the LED in an actual cosplay I wanted to make sure I could do that as well Here is the LED pack and I'll go into more detail about that in the next section of this video, but I'm going to keep the LED pack in the torso and then feed the LED through his neck and up to his head and I'm going to keep the voice box pack inside his head and feed the push button through his neck down into his arm. <laughs> Once you have sewed on all the appendages, you can go ahead and sew on the head. For each of the appendages, I used a button so that there would be some movement allowed, as you can see on the side there. My name is Connor. I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. Hello, Lieutenant. My name is Connor. This is my favorite part, the bio components. I'm using this voice box that I purchased Connor. online. And it can have multiple messages and it won't play the next one until you push the button. And I really wanted to have something like this so that I could have all of Connor's iconic lines uploaded into this little voice box. I have about 16 or 17 different phrases. I just used YouTube and searched for clips from the game that I liked and had the lines that I wanted and then I used Audacity which is a audio editing program that you can get for free and I simply just cut down the clips and saved only the pieces that I wanted. This device comes with free software from the company and I just used that to upload all of the sound files onto his voice box. Because the arm and the torso are two separate things, I had to poke another hole on the side of the arm and in the side of the torso so that I could just fit that wire through there. This is the LED that I'm so happy I have and I'm so grateful that I found it. I got it from an Etsy seller on Etsy 
and it's actually a custom order. Most of their LEDs they do specifically for cosplays, but I wanted this one to have a click button that I just placed behind the battery pack. To attach the LED, I am just going to glue a little bit of Velcro on the back of it and then put some more of the Velcro on the forehead. onto the hair. I'm using a method that is pretty popular in people who make their own wigs for cosplays and stuff like that. You essentially just need some yarn and you are going to get a very long piece of yarn, longer the better, and then you're going to wrap the yarn around your fingers and then cut on both ends so that you have a bunch of little pieces and then you're going to tie a knot and tie them onto the long piece that you just cut. After you have a long strand of all of these little pieces of yarn tied on this one long piece, you're going to get a cat comb or a dog fur comb and just brush it out. When you brush out the yarn like this, it gets this nice fluffy texture that really looks like hair. So this long strip of fluffy hair onto your doll. I started at the base of the neck and I'm just going to sew up in a zigzag pattern. Once you have sewed your wig onto your doll, it's going to look very unkempt and to remedy this, you're just going to take a pair of sharp scissors, hair scissors, thread scissors, whatever you have, and just give it a haircut. I like this part a lot. I get to live out my secret hairdresser fantasies. And I wanted to give Connor some eyebrows to make him a little bit more serious looking. So I just took some of the fluff that I cut off and I just rubbed it between my fingers until it formed like a little almost needle felted kind of thing. <laughs> and then I just glued it on his face. So moving on to his clothes, I'm not going to go in too much detail into the making of his clothes because that could be a whole nother video in and of itself, but I will show you the pattern pieces that I used and how I assembled them. I created all of these patterns myself and it's super simple. You just trace out the pattern onto the fabric that you're using and then cut around it and then sew them together. The fabric that I'm using for his dress shirt is actually some old bed sheets that I bought at a thrift store. And what's nice about this is that the ends are already hemmed. And because of this, you can just line up your pieces so that the ends of your pieces will be the hemmed part, so your final product will look very clean. I did the same kind of thing with the yoke of his shirt. So the yoke is the back of the dress shirt that almost looks like if you were to cut the shirt horizontally. You have the top part, and then you have a thicker line of stitching, and then you have the bottom part. So I used the hemmed side to be that thicker line of stitching to replicate the traditional yoke in a men's dress shirt. I always use pinking shears when I cut little pieces of fabric like this just so that they don't fray. I 
just went ahead and added four buttons and four button holes as well as the two pockets on the front. Here are the pattern pieces that I used for the pants. Pants are a little bit more difficult for me just because I have a harder time visualizing them. But it's essentially just four pieces and then the waistband. I sewed interfacing on the waistband so that it would have a little bit more structure. And I actually added pockets to the sides of the pants as well. In addition, I added some belt loops. And I used the back of an old bra clip with the hooks and eyelets. And I used that on the front of the pants so you can fasten and unfasten them. Moving on to the underwear and undergarments. A pattern for a tie essentially just looks like a tie. And I'm really excited about this fabric that I'm using for the underwear. I chose to go with this ice cream fabric because Connor is always freaking licking everything and I thought it just suited that perfectly. And I added some elastic to the underpants as well so that they would stay on the doll. These shoes are made with a faux synthetic leather kind of fabric. They're essentially just a series of rectangles with the front two ones being clipped so that they're curved. And you just sew it together like it's a cylinder. Because he doesn't have any toes, his feet are essentially cylinders, so this works pretty well. Because my fabric is not black, I just painted that with a glossy black acrylic paint. And then I used this suede cord. I wanted to go with the gray cord to add a little bit more contrast. And I just poked holes um, inside the shoe and I just threaded the cord through there. Then I glued the tongue piece behind that. The jacket. Perhaps the most iconic part of Connor. This piece is probably the most detailed and time-consuming thing that I did to this doll, believe it or not. So I literally lined it with crepe black satin. The lining is essentially the same thing as the jacket, you just get rid of all of the detailed parts and you keep it inside out and then you put it inside the right side out jacket at the end.
Connor's jacket is a little bit complex. There's a lot of sort of patchworky details. And so I just used different fabrics and cut them to that size and then sewed them onto the main base fabric, which was that gray. Theoretically, all of the techniques that I'm using to make this mini jacket could actually be applied to a actual size human jacket as well. So if you're interested in cosplaying as any of the androids from Detroit Become Human, you can definitely use these techniques and look at the pattern pieces that I used and replicate the same thing. This is a fully operational jacket, just at a much smaller scale. So we're going to be including a zipper, snaps for the front, as well as some iron-on embroidered letters to create the word Android on the back. For the blue components on his jacket, the glowing blue cyber life triangle, as well as the armband, I'm going to be using this blue fabric just as a base, and then I bought this fluorescent uh, blue powder off of Amazon, which is powered by UV light and it's rechargeable. So I'm going to mix that powder with a little bit of fabric painting medium so that it will stick to my fabric pieces and then I'm just going to paint it onto my fabric pieces. To add a little bit more stability to those blue patches, I just glued a little bit of black felt to the back of them. So for the collars of both the dress shirt and the jacket, I'm also going to be using some more interfacing. Interfacing is just a sort of tacky material that you iron onto a fabric to give it a little bit more stability such as in the collars or the cuffs of your shirt or jacket. And I'm tucking the collar in between the lining and the outside of the jacket so that when I flip it back, it will be nice and clean looking. Sewing a lining onto anything is always a little bit tricky because you want to do so in the most parsimonious way. <laughs> and what I mean by that is just, you want to have as few raw edges as possible, but you're always going to have some just because you need somewhere to turn it inside out from. However, you can manage to have no raw edges if you want to do a little bit of hand sewing, such as slip stitching, which is what I used to attach the lining to the zipper. Slip stitching is one of my favorite stitches. It just looks so smooth and so clean and it'll feel better against your skin. Granted, this is going against a plushie's quote, skin. <laughs> so he's not really going to feel it. And even if he was a living being, androids don't feel anything anyway, <laughs> or, or do they? <laughs> I guess you'll have to play the game to find out. <laughs> So to sew the lining onto the sleeve, you're going to put them right sides together, but put the lining on top of the outside piece. And then you're going to sew it at the bottom, just around the edge, 
and then you're going to push it in so that when you do this you'll have a very nice clean looking sleeve. And then we're going to sew our zipper on. Connor's jacket doesn't actually have a zipper, but I wanted to include one on this jacket. So the zipper that I made sure to get was a separating zipper. And separating zippers are the types of zippers that you have on your own jackets and things. And it allows you to move the two pieces of fabric apart because there is a little metal piece that feeds into the pull tab. I am sewing the lining to the jacket, the outside part, at the very bottom, and I'm just top stitching them down. And the final piece of sewing on this jacket is to sew the little snaps in on the pockets. This denim is not really the right color or pattern as Connor's jacket. I was just using it for more of a structural piece. So I'm taking some fabric paint right now that I mixed to be gray, a darker gray than the other gray on his jacket, and I'm just going to paint over the denim. And then using some foam, I created this little triangle stamp, and I'm just stamping a bunch of different shades of gray, 50 shades of gray if you will, <laughs> onto the jacket. I just got a little bit of glitter and some more bluish fabric paint and I'm now going to paint the finer details on his jacket so this is mainly just the wording such as RK800 and his serial number. So depending on how many times you kill Connor in the game, <laughs> that will determine which serial number you do. I only killed Connor once, but I would have killed him a lot more if I didn't have my friend <laughs> taking the controller from me and making sure that I didn't kill him more than once because I desperately, desperately wanted him to have a good relationship with Hank.
So like I said, you can charge this. And so I'm using an LED lamp that I use for gel nails and that actually charges it really well. So you can just stick it under there and it will actually be glowing for several hours. And I have Connor's coin that can sit in his pocket and he can hold it in his magnetic hands. So with all my plushies, I always write a little something something, it just depends on the plushie. Put this little slip of paper inside a fabric heart, and as you can tell I use the glowing stuff on the heart again. And then I put the heart inside the plushie. So this is my Connor plushie and he's all finished and ready to go. My name is Connor. I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. I like dogs. But he ate them. We didn't want to leave him a chance, huh? so much for watching. I can't believe you've gotten to the end of this video. I hope that you found it entertaining and inspiring and I hope you want to go ahead and create a Connor plushie for yourself. I also hope you don't think I'm insane for doing this. I think I'm insane for doing this. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more geeky or nerdy inspired crafts and creations, be sure to subscribe and I will have more video tutorials for crazy things that I'm doing out soon. But until then, I'm certainly going to miss our bromance too. I'll see you soon. Bye!